Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with another themed video of Dude, you gotta listen to this. Yeah, I've decided that all 10 videos this week are just going to be for this theme because I'm really interested in exploring some of this stuff. So, today we're going to be looking at a band called Slow Mass. Much like yesterday, I have, I mean, much like the video we just did yesterday, I have no idea who Slow Mass is. So this is going to be really interesting. Another band that I get to be introduced to, we're going to be looking at the track Blocks. Let's dive into it and see what Slow Mass is bringing to the table today. Very fun drum part. Lots of dissonance in the guitar line, creating an uneasy sound. Big bass tone. It's a single note, but the bass is leading this section. That whole drum fill. Oh, a second vocalist? We're in a nice three. Really leaning into the dissonance there. The way that the sound just kind of got scooped and sucked up into this, this one note. I wonder if that goes into the next track. All right. Very grungy, but with a punk side to it, too. I think it's an interesting combination of sounds that works really I mean I also I guess this suppose introduces a little bit of noise rock there towards the end focusing well particularly on no noise on dissonant harmony I like how 
the atmosphere is consistent throughout this entire track. It really doesn't matter if it's quiet, if it's loud, if it's bombastic, if it's noisy. There's always this feeling of, of discontent, of, of, you can't really, it, it doesn't feel settled. It doesn't feel safe in any way, if that makes sense. It's, it's constantly off kilter, a little bit unbalanced. It just doesn't feel safe. And I think it's awesome how that pretty much comes from one instrument, and that's our guitar. The bass typically gives us root tone hits. I even mentioned that, I think it was the second verse, I was like, oh, this whole thing's bass led. Even if the bass is only playing one note. <laughs> um, the drums, I think, add a really harmonious element to the track. There is this idea of, it's not lethargic in that it wants to drag backwards, but there certainly isn't a lot of momentum forwards without the drums. Even the vocals are... Uh, they don't have much projection to them. They're very ethereal. It's it's really a lot of mixed head and chest voice. Um, just very light and effortless. There's there's not not immediacy to the vocal delivery. Uh, and the guitars they they just feel sluggish, kind of sludgy even. Just the tone of it. Um, nothing really feels like it has drive to it. So that's what the drums are a positive element. Um, Everything just kind of, where was I going with this? <laughs> um, I don't remember now. That's kind of garbage. Oh, brain ain't working for me today. Dang. So I was talking about guitars being unstable. Oh, yeah, yeah, the drums. They're, they're sort of different from everything else. Every instrument sort of just wants to be. And the drums push us forward. I think it's interesting that they sit outside of everything else, um, creating a, a positive or harmonious element to it, where everything else is sort of just fine existing where it is. It's a very unique way of... Uh, let me just talk about the drums wholesale for a second, uh, because there are some really cool ideas in here. Um, there's a lot of standard uh drum fills down the kit starting on the snare digga, 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 down the toms we hear that a couple of times but there's also some really inventive ideas especially when you compare it against the offbeat hi-hat hits that we have throughout here and the way that the drum rhythms the toms the snares the bass kick play off of this offbeat hit coming from the cymbal work uh, and it just creates a really complex layered rhythmic quality that works fantastically in opposition of everything else again the drums just have this driving force forward um and it's it's and it's in everything it's in the way that they drum it's in the patterns that they use it's sometimes in the simplicity it's sometimes in that technical melodic style there's just the drums push the song forward otherwise it would feel like it's just dragging constantly and i think it could even lose some of its momentum and not feel as not be as cool of a song, I think, honestly. We also have the vocals. Surprising, actually. I mean, that's one of the things when I go into a, a new band. I have no idea what to expect. We get the vocals, though. Kind of mixed head and, and chest voice. A little bit of grit put in there. Very grungy. We get that for a verse and a chorus. I'm like, okay, this is it. And then I think it was, was it the second verse came in with the female cleans? And I was like, interesting. We got a little bit of overlap, a little bit of uh, counterpoint with the male vocals coming in around the 75% mark. It was just for like three syllables though, which is really interesting. I thought the back half might be this uh, this duet between the two vocalists. And it isn't. It was like the, the male vocalist just wanted to say like three words <laughs> and then call it a day. But then we had the harmony from the vocals on that second chorus and i love the way that their voices sound together um also additionally they're both using a very light vocal delivery not a lot of projection not a lot of direction to it it's sort of ethereal and just exists it's it just is and both of their vocals doing that i think um elevates that lethargy or maybe not even lethargy just uh <clears throat> a feeling of being okay where you're at 
Just allowing yourself to float, if that makes sense. Uh, being at peace with the current. Ooh, the water current and the current time. That's good. Ooh, man, sometimes I say really clever things. <laughs> and I don't even mean it, it just happens. Um, but yeah, it all, it, all, yeah, it all works together very well. Uh, and it was a nice surprise, too. I love dual vocals. And this really takes us back to where we started, which is the guitars. They introduced the song with a bit of tension. There's a little bit of darkness, of instability. Uh, on the third part of the main phrase, we really lean into dissonant tones, and we back it off a bit and return back to just something that's a bit off. That's how a majority of this song works, whether it's the verse chord progression or the chorus chord progression. Both feature this. A little bit of darkness, a little bit of tension, a lot of bit of tension, and then a bit of a resolution to take us back to our little bit of darkness. It is overall not a, a positive chord progression at all. It focuses on a lot of negative emotions. This is magnified at the end of the track in our outro, which is where we begin to lean into the noise rock section. The guitars, the bass, they just start moving in very strange directions. It's no longer really necessarily about dissonance or consonant harmony as much as how much noise can we create. We introduce even more unstable uh, chords than we had in the previous sections, leading to this distorted, amplified, warble sound in some parts that to me just sounds completely gnarly. I'm sure people who listen to noise rock, it's a standard texture for, the, for that type of music. But to me, all I can hear is that heavy dissonance being amplified and overdriven, and it's just a gnarly sound. Um... And we get that every once in a while. The guitars veer further away from this core note. It's something I really haven't talked about much here, but the chords don't really change octaves much. We have this chord stack, and we have that chord stack, and then this one, and they're all generally around the same area. But this section of the track, they begin to get adventurous and finding higher and higher notes to play, while the bass is exploring lower notes to play. It's creating this contrast, this distance, this drift between all of our instruments, which, while they were focusing on dissonant, unharmonious sounds, they were still unified in execution, and now there is space growing between everything. Uh, and that extra space is pushing them into directions that are destructive to the sounds of the music. And I think that's the key element here, uh, is that the, the big takeaway is the end of this track gets gnarlier than anything we have heard before. I think it's interesting that the vocals don't come in here at all to help alleviate any of this. It is The vocals are the core instrument that provide consonant harmony throughout this whole track. Whether it's a single instrument, uh, sorry, a single vocalist just providing consonant harmony against what uh, the chord would be if it were positive, or both of the vocalists creating harmonious consonant harmony together. Everything the vocals do are gorgeous. Pretty much everything the instruments do are ugly. Or at least gnarly, if we want to stick with more of a positive negative <laughs> descriptor. Um, and the vocals just aren't here at all. All we get is the filth, the, the ugliness of the writing here. And it's on full display and at its worst. I don't know what all of this means, but... I have a feeling of all of it combined. I'm curious what the lyrics are going to unlock that I might be able to work this narrative of uh, unified destruction into, I get not unified destruction, uni unified dissonance into, uh, you know, everything going in their own direction and just creating the most clashing, disgusting stuff there at the end of the track. Um, and this distance between everything and the lack of unification at the end. What all that might mean from a, a lyrical narrative standpoint. The last thing that I want to touch on is something I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Production. That's what I want to talk about. 
it's the idea of how we get from the big to the small and from the small to the big. There's a very cool technique here that almost feels like a funnel at times. In fact, I think all of these transitions are very funnel-like, where it's not so much of a harsh transition where we were doing this and we are doing this now, but it sort of is. There is almost like a crossfade effect between these two sections, wholesale, not like the guitars are being crossfaded into a more, more distorted version, but like we've exported this entire section stems into the verse. This is our stem for, for the verse now, and then this is our stem for the, the chorus. It's all the other stems bounced out into this one, and then we're crossfading between the two of them. But it's not really like a crossfade. That's the weird thing, because there isn't a diminishing of one. It's sort of like it morphs into another. I know how to do, weirdly enough, I know how to do this visually. If I were to edit this video, I could morph one thing to another object and have a smooth transition between the two. I don't know how to do this with audio though, but that's what it feels like. It is a very quick, rapid evolution of one into the next. And they're similar enough that it almost feels like when we go from something smaller to bigger that it just funnels out. And there at the end, when we went from that very full sound to those final seconds of just the, the main guitar, it felt like we got funneled into that. Like we, we ramped a transition from one style to another. I don't know. Like I said, for whatever reason, this makes more sense to me visually than aud audibly, auditorily. There we go. Um, and I think it's just because I've been making videos and editing videos for close to a decade now, and I've only been into audio production for like three, two years now, well, like two and a half maybe. Definitely since I've started this channel, but I've been editing videos long before I started this channel. And uh, yeah, just like, it's such a bizarre idea, and I'm curious if there's any producers in here who could lend some insight into that. I'm sure it has to do with uh, filter modulation, oh, LFOs, man. Every single time I have a question about a cool effect, someone's like, yeah, just use LFOs there. Uh, okay. I, I guess I really need to learn those, especially if someone comes at me, oh yeah, these are LFOs, 100%. We're cross-fading LFOs going on here. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I could be way off. Someone else would be like, dude, low frequency, uh, modulation? No, that's not how you do it. <laughs> That just goes to show how little I know about production. Uh, let me hit some lyrics going on here, and uh, then we'll wrap this video up. So, um, any aspirations I had to unlocking the meaning of the music after figuring out the lyrics is completely gone, since the lyrics are... What? There aren't even that many of them, which I think is the most confusing thing. I feel like I heard so many more lyrics than this. We have a six line stanza, a nine or ten line stanza, and then a two line stanza, and that's it. And I'm pretty sure I heard verse, chorus, verse, chorus in here. At least musically, it's supported. Maybe the lyrics aren't broken up like that, but... The guitar and drum certainly existed between these two ideas before we hit the outro, so I don't know. It says, you are the few to survive if this disease eats us one mile per minute, a cancerous lead, a life it precedes, and you are the few still alive. You seem misled, left alone in bed, a drugged up knock, a cluster of blocks. That's the first stanza. We have survivors of a disease. But I don't know what that disease is supposed to be. I'm not sure what these people are supposed to feel. It says you seem misled. Just a cluster of blocks left alone in bed. What? The two line stanza says, when we wait for the caretaker, I'll start to loosen my ends. 
And the final six line stanza says, You are the few in my mind, an amphetamine dream, a pastel scene. You've lost the battle in your hands, a mudslinging fence, twisting meds at the end. I don't, I don't know. The last stanza makes me think that this might be some sort of metaphor for a mental disorder. Being that there is a medication being taken uh, that apparently the last few to survive are not people like I originally understood, but maybe something in his body or in his mind, a personification or, or metaphorical representation of something. But I don't know. Although I guess that does work. When we wait for the caretaker, I'll start to loosen my ends. Yeah, I don't know. I do think that it might be something to do with a medical disorder. Uh, me uh, sorry, a mental disorder. But it's so vague. That without having a little bit of context, I feel like I'm quite a bit lost. Yeah, and I just, I don't have enough to go on to even take a, a stab at what the music might be representing there. Although we do have the idea of lo loosening my ends, could be about some frayed ends. <clears throat> uh, which could be the distancing of the instruments towards the end. However, that would still be about a minute off from when that line is stated. So, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Slow masses blocks. Let me know what you thought of this track. Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives on this track. Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. You can find links in here to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today, but I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to be checking out two more tracks for this week's theme. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to. <laughs> I literally, I've said that like 1,500 times on this channel. There are, wait, I think we crossed 2,000 videos recently. But I didn't say at the beginning. So yeah, just like a lot of times, I put that tagline at the end of videos. And uh, I reached the end of it and I was like, what's the next word? What are we being critical of? <laughs> oh, jeez. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.